Hi everyone, welcome to another NLP Journal Club video. Today we're looking at a paper called Realm Retrieval Augmented Language Model Pre-Training by a bunch of authors from Google Research. This paper is about mask language modeling, which has been very popular in last years in NLP. So the standard Birch language model takes in, uh, is trained to predict some masked tokens Given, given a sentence like the mask at the top of the pyramid, it tries to replace the mask token with the correct prediction, which is pyramidion here in this case. So the pyramidion at the top of the pyramid. And the idea of this realm paper is to augment this process using external knowledge. So one could extract a sentence from Wikipedia like the Pyramidion on top allows for less material higher up the pyramid. One can extract this and one can integrate this into the language modeling um, objective um, such, such, such that the process becomes the mask at the top of the pyramid, then a separation separator token, and then this knowledge sentence. And then one can use this sentence and the context to predict the mask token better to improve this performance. This is precisely what the authors do. They propose this real model, which combines a retriever, retrieval model, which finds relevant documents from a database Z here. It takes them and takes the most relevant document and prepares this document or sentence or wherever text fragment is found, it prepares it and uses it for, for this extra uh, knowledge augmented prediction step. Actually, this approach is a little bit related to a paper that I talked about a few videos ago about, again, augmented, augmenting language models with, with external knowledge. But it's a different approach because it's based on this word language modeling objective rather than the more standard um, sequence modeling style approach to language modeling. So let's go into it in a little bit more detail then. So just to give you a little bit of a more intuition of how the math kind of works out, because one great feature of this real model is that the retrieval and the prediction models, so there's two, two models, those are trained jointly um, in an end-to-end -end fashion, which is um, quite cool, meaning that you can you're going to be fine tuning your retrieval to be getting better documents, documents that are more relevant to improve your final predictions. So in the, in the standard kind of BERT setup, you have some input text, which could be masked, something like that. And you're trying to predict the missing mask token Y. However, in this real model, they introduce this latent variable Z here, um, which is a subset of the database capital Z consisting of potentially millions of documents such as the whole Wikipedia and what they do is they have the two models one is modeling the probability of the output Y given the document that's selected from Z and the input X times this is times uh, multiplied with the probability of a document Z given the input text. So this is the retrieval model. This is the standard bird style language model augmented by this document that is extracted from this retrieval model. And then they kind of marginalize over a couple of those documents extracted from this database Z. And that's how this works basically. And the two models are trained as I said, jointly together. So to implement the two models, you're going to be using actually for both of them transformer type of models. First of all, the retrieval model, you're going to be having some embeddings computed over the input text that you want to find the related um, um, documents. And then also to each, uh, you're going to have an embedding for each document Z. And you're going to be computing the inner product between the two embeddings, which is going to give you some score F of the relevance of 
document z given input text x yeah and you're gonna be also computing like a, it's gonna be like in the end a softmax distribution of the of overall documents in a database that's how it works and obviously one one sees that if you have a very big database of let's say millions of documents this can quickly become very computationally expensive to do overall documents so they actually come up with some approximations to do this and they use an algorithm called MIPS which basically uh, does a near approximate nearest neighbor style search to get the k closest documents of given the input um, x and um, and so this is one challenge that they have to deal with in this paper to make this kind of work better but another challenge that one can think of is even if you're using this approximate algorithm to speed up this nearest neighbor retrieval of the relevant documents one challenge is that you're going to be have to potentially recompute this because this MIPS algorithm is based on it's kind of computing some intermediate um, index to, to speed up this nearest neighbor search but uh, to make use of this and you're going to be updating the embeddings also of the documents during training you need to be recomputing this MIPS um, index so this is not practical so they they also introduce some uh, actually they, they what they do is they only recompute this MIPS index every couple of hundred training steps to to make this faster and so every couple of hundred steps they recompute this index given the current embeddings produced by the current transformer at this training step they actually have the they do like some co-engineering cool i guess where they they are doing the update in a separate thread you know maybe in another pc or something even i don't know so they have some gpus recomputing this uh, index of the document embeddings that are used every so often and then they freeze those uh, they, they don't keep updating this index every training step but they keep on using it to deliver updates to this uh, retrieval model and to this subsequently is used in the in the whole system obviously so this is kind of how the retrieval model works um, and so this, this delivers you gives you like some distribution over your all of your documents in your database and then given that you have your top let's say eight documents that you selected because they, they are like picking not just a single one but multiple ones they kind of make some they make some assumptions that some of the documents will be probably most important and the other documents will have very low p of z given x you also have some sum here here over all documents again so, so this is the where the canon step also comes in and but let's say you have given given that you have some document that you selected some z and you then the next step is to to update this the other objective which is going to be predicting the most likely output token to be used to replace the mask token and actually this is done in a fashion that is very similar to the standard bird training step and actually let's look at this picture here which Kind of illustrates it probably more clearly basically the way this um, step works which is p of y given x and z is you're gonna be pre-training given so you're gonna be given the original x requested by the user for example you're gonna have your separator token and then you're gonna input the external knowledge text z here and you're gonna be uh, then trying to predict the correct mask token pyramidion. So you're integrating in this way your external knowledge into the mask language model. And also this is separated using the separator token to, to make sure that the model is able to distinguish between the external knowledge and the current context. And yeah, so this is how it works. You get the predictions and then you can do the back propagation all the way 
up to the retrieval model, which is um, pretty cool that it can work like this. Uh, and uh, they say that also this seems to be the first paper to ever be able to come up with a end-to-end -end architecture for doing both retrieval and prediction in this way. So this kind of gives you a brief overview of how this works. And the authors actually test this model um, in a standard. So actually this, this birth, there's actually two, two stages to train this model, uh, maybe I should say. The first stage is the code pre-training, which is done in the same way as a standard BERT model where you're just trying to predict um, some missing token, um, which has been masked. But then you can also even apply it to, uh, let's say, to question answering, to question answering setup by, um, which is illustrated here in this figure. So you're gonna have your X is gonna be the question. You're gonna append your external knowledge to this question here in the end, on the right hand side, let's say. And you're gonna be then fine tuning um, to, to get the correct answer what is the angle of, of an equilateral triangle? The answer is 60 degrees. And so they have the first pre-train on this um, standard bird style objective, and then they fine tune for question answering because they want to apply this real model to open domain question answering, where you have some question, maybe you don't have, maybe you, ha you have to, basically the model, there's like two options to answer this question. Either the model has seen a sentence like the angle of an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees somewhere in the training data and then it's able to somehow the language model is able to memorize this 60 degrees very well which is what has people have been doing pretty much well everyone so far expanding the language model parameters more and more to be able to memorize more and more of these facts or patterns and so on but here you're going to be instead extracting some statements from the database and using them to answer the question. So yeah, moving on to the experiments. As I said, they are testing primarily on this open domain question answering, which is illustrated in this table here. They compare against a bunch of baselines, which basically um, you have some kind of T5. This is the transformer sequence sequence transformer train on similar kind of denoising objectives to, to the bird, but a little bit different. So it's like a full sequence sequence model uh, having actually a huge amount of parameters here, as you can see. So this, this type of T5 model is basically would be able to answer by memorizing knowledge um, from the training data. That would be the only way it could be doing it. Then I think here you have some other models that are also trying to leverage some external knowledge in some different ways. But as far as I'm aware, those, no, uh, those are not like fine tuning the retrieval and the prediction step jointly. And on the bottom, we have this real model using the Wikipedia, the whole of Wikipedia as a database uh, and different like I think those are different questions or something in that but basically it seems that the real model is able to perform all baselines um, across those three benchmark data sets here for open domain question answering and um, yeah achieving sometimes actually quite quite a nice improvement and even doing it with not a huge amount of parameters I'm not sure if these parameters includes the parameters used for the document embeddings, which would be actually very, quite a lot, right? Perhaps it doesn't include it, I'm not sure, because if you have like a 700 dimensional embedding for your data set of Wikipedia, which is like 5 million documents, this is gonna be quite, quite a large number of parameters. I don't know if they include that here. I would guess not, but you can see like the biggest model has 11 billion parameters here, T5, quite a lot. So another ablation study that they do here is that they want to see like, okay, what is the, the biggest effect of 
improving the performance? Like, is this retrieval model really benefiting the generations, the prediction step, and vice versa? Or is it like, okay, if we remove the retrieval model, nothing happens, and then it's like just not doing not doing much. But it seems that the indeed, like if they do the ablation study, they are getting a reduced reduced results, and um, in particular, like it's beneficial to use the both the realm retrieval and the realm encoder jointly to get the best result. And to they also like there's a, they show that it's some nice increase in terms of recall retrieval of the most relevant documents from a database. So the best retrieval is done using the realm retrieval rather than some I think some random some I don't know what some other retrieval by some other paper. And also it seems that if you update the uh, approximate nearest neighbor index for retrieving their similar documents. If you update it less frequently, you are getting worse performance. So it's important to keep updating these, this index regularly because the parameters of the embeddings are going to be changing as you keep on fine tuning. And actually, it's very interesting. I didn't see any results here. They didn't do any analysis. Uh, I mean, of I'm curious, like about the properties of this final document embeddings that they were able to learn with this retrieval model. It's interesting if there's some interesting uh, patterns that can be discovered. And um, that's pretty much it, I think. The main points that I wanted to cover. So very interesting approach. Um, really, really interesting that they were able to fine tune this retrieval and prediction step together to improve this mask language modeling in particular it seems to be effective for for uh, when dealing with facts which may require some external knowledge such as the example here when it comes to some things that i'm wondering is i didn't find any discussion about how this scales with your database size i'm curious how much memory is needed for this document embeddings and it would be great in future work, as I said, to look at those learned embeddings about what has been learned by this model. But it's a very interesting approach and it would be interesting to see if there's more models developed that can combine this retrieval and text generation, maybe even to do a more complicated text generation, like, let's say, I don't know, generate a summary or a translation or so, given external knowledge. That is all. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon in the next video.